Okay, so without further ado, let's get started by talking. Yeah, let's get started by talking about reading comprehension. And this is a section that is the hardest to get better at generally. Um, pardon me, I'm just going to start over and also get my reading comprehension uh, from uh, get the the reading comprehension test from the June 2007 LSAT ready. We're going to be talking about that later. I just have to get mine. Okay, so starting that again, reading comprehension is the hardest section to get better at on the LSAT. That doesn't mean it's impossible to get better at it, just that, you know, in deciding where to spend your time, if you have a weakness on logic games, if you have equivalent weakness on logic games and reading comprehension, it makes far more sense to spend time on logic games uh, in order to improve there. Likewise, if you've already made an improvement on reading comprehension, it's going to be harder to make an additional improvement, whereas on logic games, even if you've already made an improvement, you can still do better. I'm not saying don't try a reading comp, just when evaluating where can you make the most progress, generally, this is where you can make the least progress. And the reason it's the place that you can make the least progress is because it's something that's testing reading. And reading is something that you've built over the last 20 or so years of your life. And your total time spent reading is what's going to affect how well you do at reading comprehension. Uh, so total time spent reading, reading for fun, reading complicated texts, your vocabulary size, all of those things matter for LSAT reading comprehension. And there's no quick way to get better at them. Um, you can do a few things, like I, I recommend looking up words that you don't know and just making that a lifelong habit. Because uh, if you're going to be in law school for years and doing legal practice, learning words you don't know is definitely going to help, but in the short term, it won't do much to boost uh, the LSAT score. So reading comprehension, harder to get better at. So what can you do? Um, first, let's like look at what a reading comprehension passage looks like and talk about it. So I've just got like a blurred out passage here on the screen. Oh, wait, uh, I've got to share my screen one moment. And actually, bear with me. Okay, so this is what an RC passage looks like. It's blurred out because uh, I can't show LSAT questions on screen. Um, but they all have roughly this format. And what's interesting about LSAT reading comprehension passages is that they're not regular texts. They're actually written by the LSAC specifically for the LSAT. So if you took the SAT, you might have noticed there were some texts that they just like took completely out of a book and printed it. But that's not the case here. These are actually written in a very standardized way. And they all follow kind of this format. This is actually from the June 2007 LSAT. It's passage uh, four. So they all have about four paragraphs. This one has five. One, two, three, four, five. And it has a set structure. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight, like how to analyze the structure of the reading comprehension passage and get better at doing them. Because basically what the tests what the reading comprehension tests you on is your ability to find specific facts in the paragraph, the passage, that help you prove and disprove answers. And also to really understand the nuances of the passage. And the way to do that, well actually, before I talk about that, I just wanna talk a little bit about, like do a short lesson on reading speed because this is something that won't make or break your reading comprehension success, but is something that I have found helps people. Um, I'm not talking about speed reading, like the claims to being able to read at say like uh, 700 to 1000 words per minute with full retention. I just mean slightly increasing your baseline reading speed. Because I would say a good speed to read the passage is something like two to three minutes. Um, if you go slower than that, you can still do fine. 
uh, but if you go faster than that, obviously it's going to help. Like I probably take a minute and a half because I just I've read a lot all of my life, I have a very large vocabulary, and I read really really fast, even reading complex materials. So I'm going to show you an application you can use to to get somewhat better at that potentially. I found this works for about 30 to 40 percent of people, and for even more people, it helps improve skimming speed. So this is called Spreeder. That's Spreeder.com. And when you go to the website, well, it's going to look like this. Just uh, paste the link to that. It's going to look like this. But to get to where I'm going to show you, you click on free app on the top left, and it shows you a text box. Um, what I've done, I went to the Montreal Gazette, which is my local newspaper, and I pasted an article. And I'm going to click on Spreed and show you what this can do. So right now it just shows the word it, that's the first word of the article. But I don't want you to start with the first word only. I want you to go to settings, which is down here, and you change the chunk size to three. Once you hit save, you'll see what that means is it says it puts three words on the screen at once. And I think that's actually everything. You want the alignment to be the center. And then you just press play. And what's going to, oh, right. Uh, actually, the first step, the first step rather than Spreeder should be to do a reading speed test. You, uh, this is just the default one that comes up. You click the start button, read it, press the stop button, and your results will be at the bottom. Probably for most of you, it'll be between 200 and 300 words per minute. That's about the average for a college educated reader in the United States. Uh, a few of you might be below 200 and some of you on the high end might be at like 350, 400. I'd be surprised if anyone's over 400. Um, <clears throat> though it's possible, like I probably read between four to 500 words per minute on most texts, but it depends on the density and, and so on. So find your reading speed and then just kind of uh, make this about 10% faster. So if you read at 200 words per minute, do 220. The 10% faster is just because you'll be able to read this a little bit better, most likely. And then when you do Spreeder, um, look at the middle word. Look at was, and just press play, and follow along with what it says. And focus not on, like, so you're not focusing on reading the words left to right. You're focusing on looking at the middle, seeing all the words, and then uh, understanding what's being said. And, you know, I said it quite slow. If you started at 300, you'd probably want to go, like, 330. And it's going to be a fair bit faster. But you still may be able to understand this. And basically what you want to do is you want to take articles and feed them in here and just go like a bit faster than is comfortable. So if you're comfortable at 330, try 360 for the next article. And keep going. And then also occasionally set it like way too fast, like go to a thousand words per minute or something, put an article, read this. It's going to go by like likely faster than you can understand it. Um, but you want to just try and get as much as you can. And then after it goes by at a thousand, do the same text again, but go back down to 900 words per minute, then do it again and go down to 800 and go until it makes sense. The aim of this is to just sort of train your brain to read in a physically different way. Because I found the people that this works for probably the case is like, your brain can actually process words faster than you can physically get them to it. Like maybe you learned your mechanical way of reading when you were like six or 12 or something when you weren't able to process as much. And now you are better at reading, you know more words, you're, you have better brain power, but you're still reading mechanically the same way. So if that's the case for you, this app will um, help you see the words faster. And it will train your peripheral vision because you absolutely can see all three words like this. Like a lot of people just read left to right. But how we actually read is in little bounces. Like we go jump, 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 jump. They're called saccades. And if you train yourself to kind of read three words at a time and make larger jumps, you can actually read the whole line in fewer jumps and speed up your total time. So this trains you both to work on your peripheral vision and to practice like explicitly seeing things in the middle. So like when I start reading a passage, I don't start at the very left word, 
I start sort of, um, so I start sort of in the middle here and then maybe jump over to here and then there and then jump there, jump there, jump there. So I only have about like three to four glances per line and this will specifically train you to do that more. Um, and also like going, setting it really fast and then lowering it will just sort of like push you to go to your limits. Now, I want to emphasize again, I'm not talking about like speed reading where, you know, you try and read 800 words per minute as your natural reading speed and rush through the passage. I'm not recommending rushing through the passage. Like I read at a comfortable pace. It just so happens that my comfortable pace is really, really fast. But if I only read at 300 words per minute, I wouldn't try and finish the passage in a minute and a half. I would probably try and finish the passage in three minutes or something like that, or two minutes, or I don't know. I don't know exactly how long it would take, but you know, I, I wouldn't be rushing because rushing is counterproductive. This is the most confused point when I tell people about this, I'm not telling you to rush. Um, but if you do this and it boosts your natural reading, your comfortable reading speed by like 10%, which happens for some people, then that's pure benefit because you're, you just are now faster at reading. So for about 30 to 40% of people, I find this increases your baseline reading speed by a small but meaningful amount. Um, if it has, you know, try it for a week. If it has no effect, that's fine. Um, but it probably also improves your uh, skimming. Because like when I skim a text, I kind of go down in a cross crisscross way like this. And because I've trained my peripheral vision to see around the word I'm looking at, when I skim a text, I will actually pick up far more than um, I used to when I just, when I hadn't trained this skill. So I think even if it doesn't improve your reading speed, it can improve your skimming speed. And skimming is a vital tool for locating information on reading comprehension or looking over something to see if you understand it or not. I mean, I don't, I do not recommend skimming the passage as your only read. It's just a supplemental tool. So those are the two things I think uh, you can get out of Spreeder. I'm also sending one more article. This is uh, and actually not an approach I use myself, but some people have had success with this. It's a post by Tim Ferriss on how to improve speed reading with, or improve reading speed rather, uh, using like a pencil, which is something you can do on the LSAT. So I, I recommend all of you try that. So measure your reading speed, then use Spreeder and see if you can increase your reading speed. Set it to uh, three, chunk size of three, and just sort of set your reading, your starting reading speed here about 10% higher than your reading. And then just take text from a newspaper or something you know, oh, right. And choice of text, like don't take super advanced texts. This is not training your understanding. This is purely training your, your physical reading capability. So like simple texts are actually better. Um, and then just see if that works. Okay, so onto reading speed, reading comprehension itself. What is reading comprehension testing? Reading comprehension is testing your ability to understand the broad structure of this text and know where details are located. And this is an important distinction. It's not testing your ability to memorize everything. It's not a memory test and you shouldn't try and memorize details, but you do get points if you can correctly find details. So what you want to do is instead read for structure and try and identify the main point of each paragraph because they've written these things in such a way that every paragraph has an identifiable point. So you can kind of summarize things uh, in that passage. Well, actually, I'd like you to look at like passage four of the June 2007 LSAT, and I'm just gonna give you like roughly my paragraph summaries of it. So when I read this, and these were summaries that I had in my head when I did it, I summarized the passage sort of like this. The first paragraph was um, primary sources are inadequate for studying the Irish landscape. Pollen analysis, fossilized pollen can be useful. Here's one use of it, figuring out when cereal grain was cultivated. Here's another one, finding when flax was cultivated. And finally, there are some limits to this. That's roughly what I knew about each paragraph. So problem about landscape history, pollen analysis is a useful tool. It let us figure out when we started cultivating cereal in a certain county. Let us cultivate when we started having flax in a certain county. It can't do everything. 
That's, I know roughly that much. So when a question asks something about flax, I know where to look. I'll look at paragraph four. And that significantly cuts down your time because you know if you're trying to like check an answer and you've got to search the whole passage to find out where something is, you're not gonna have enough time to do that. It might take you 30 seconds. But if you're if you know it's only in paragraph four, it might take you seven seconds. And seven seconds is nothing. People routinely spend like 30 seconds stuck between two answers trying to figure it out when the answer is right there in the passage. So you really want to be able to find ways to cut down your search time when looking for specific information because it's the key to answering a lot of questions. The other thing that passage summaries does is it sort of is a check on whether you understand what you read. Um, because these passages are pretty dense and it's very easy. I find most people when they've read stuff have just like missed major elements of what's going on. And if you don't have any kind of check that you're actually understanding what you're reading, you can easily just not notice. But if you force yourself to make some kind of a summary for the passage, you can't really summarize something until you explain what it does. And you want to try and be like a little bit specific too. Note that, you know, I said something like, uh, pollen let us see when cereal was cultivated in a certain county. There's actually a lot of information in that phrase. If I just said, you know, like cereal paragraph, that's not very descriptive. I, I wouldn't necessarily have understood what's going on if that was my whole summary. But if you are detailed enough, then you've actually got a good summary of everything that's going on in that paragraph. 